In this recording, we look at how to read inverse t-distribution tables to find the critical value of t for two-tailed hypothesis tests. And if you have not looked at it yet, after this you might also want to see our related recording on finding the critical value of t for one-tailed hypothesis tests. And as with the previous recording, it focuses very much on using the table to find t, given the information provided actual recordings going through the step-by-step -step process of hypothesis testing or more of the conceptual background to critical t values are also in separate stats casts that you might want to look at. Now when conducting a t test the calculated value of the test statistic can be compared against a critical value of t which can be found using statistical tables. Here we're focusing on the case where the hypothesis test is two-tailed that is, the alternative hypothesis H1 has the form mu not equal to some specified number. So let's see how we can use the tables to find this type of t value. And the table we're using is one which shows the cumulative distribution function f of t which is the probability of t being less than or equal to some specified value t in the distribution. And sometimes in tables, as in this case, that might be written more generally as f of x. Then across the row, we have values of f of t, while down the column, we have degrees of freedom, which is sample size minus 1. So having a look at this, I have only shown the first 10 rows of this table here to give you an idea of what this looks like. And the first step is let's think about how the cumulative distribution function f of t actually relates to the significance level alpha at which we are conducting a hypothesis test. And with the two-tailed test, the rejection region in the t distribution half of it will be over this side, so alpha on 2, and the other half will be over that side. While the cumulative distribution function f of t is going to be, as we just said, t will be some value here, and f of t will be that total area to the left. And what follows from this is that what we're actually wanting here and these actually should line up. I've drawn these rather approximately, but imagine that those line up one under another. So the basic idea is that this area to the left here is 1 minus the significance level alpha on 2. So that is where this result comes from. So once we know our significance level, we can then work that out. The next step is the degrees of freedom, which as I said is the sample size minus 1. And finally, the corresponding value in the table will then give the magnitude of t. But with it being a two-tailed test, we're effectively interested in a value of t here. Now this t distribution is centred at zero, and the value over here will then be the negative of that value. So t will be equal to plus or minus the value we get from the table. Let's have a look at this in practice then, with an actual example. Suppose, for instance, that we were conducting a two-tailed hypothesis test at the 5% significance level, where the alternative hypothesis was of the form mu not equal to 43. So again, that not equal to sign is indeed confirming it's a two-tailed test. And we're told here the sample size that we're working with is 12. We want to use this information to find the critical values of t. So the use of the 5% significance level, that gives us alpha equals 0.05 when we write that as a probability. So f of t, we said was 1 minus alpha divided by 2. So that is going to be 1 minus 0.05 divided by 2, which is going to work out to be 0.975. So right away we know that that's the column that we're going to be looking at. The next thing we saw was that the sample size was 12, so n equals 12. Therefore, the degrees of freedom is always n minus 1, so that's going to be 11. 
So in this case then, we're going to be looking at the row for 11 degrees of freedom. So putting all of this together then, we can see that our critical T value here is, or the magnitude of our critical T value at least, is 2.201. So let's start by writing that down. So the magnitude of the critical value of T is 2.201. But when it's a two-tailed test, that means it can actually be positive or negative. That is, the critical value of T is actually plus or minus 2.201 in this case. And if you look at that visually, just a very rough sketch of a T distribution there, centred at zero, we've then got alpha equals 0.05, so we've got 0.025 in there, 0.025 in there, representing our rejection region in those two tails, so that if our T statistic observed, when we actually do our hypothesis test, is either greater than 2.201 or less than negative 2.201, it will lead us to reject H0. So that is a second example of using our table to find a critical value of the T statistic. In this example, when looking at a two-tailed hypothesis test,